What's up guys, Evil D here, and today I want to speak to you about a particular grammar topic that I get asked about quite a bit. Now, not just in this channel, but just in real life when teaching Esperanto, but also something that I see new learners discuss, and they kind of use this hard and fast rule, which gets you about 90% of the way, but then the last 10% are just messes with you, and you basically have to go back and learn things again anyway. So what I'm going to talk about in this lesson is transitivity of verbs and also the affixes igi and ig. Okay. Now before I jump into those, let's just start with transitivity for those who don't know. Okay. So a transitive verb is a verb that affects something else. So let's look at um, let's look at a verb that can be both. Okay. So you can see it kind of working in context. So you've got um, to boil. Okay. So you can boil water. You can boil tea. You can boil the flesh of your enemies. <laughs> no, but you can boil things, okay? So you can boil something else. So when you boil something, you're boiling the object of the verb, okay? So to boil water means that the water is the object it's being boiled, okay? But now let's look at it as an intransitive, okay? So you could say the water is boiling. You can say the tea is boiling, the flesh of your enemies is boiling, you know what I mean? So in this case, it's intransitive. It means that the subject is the thing that's boiling. So let's just quickly jump over that again. Transitive means to boil something. Intransitive means something is boiling, okay? So subject is, if the subject is boiling, intransitive. If the object is boiling, transitive. Now, if that confused you, Go look it up a little bit because you probably will need to know this in Esperanto anyway. And then come back. So just pause the video. Just hit that pause button. Hit it good. Okay, so now we're going to jump into the lesson, okay? So in Esperanto, when people learn about transitivity, they go, okay, so every verb's either transitive or intransitive. Although that's almost completely correct, it's not 100% correct true okay so in 99% of not 99 that's probably overboard 91.25 I don't know where I got that number from 90% of the time verbs are either transitive or they're intransitive but in Esperanto they can change they can be um, sometimes transitive sometimes intransitive so that's why this rule although helpful in 90% of cases um, doesn't always apply for instance the verb to dance in Esperanto dancy is almost in every use intransitive so someone dances i dance she dances the dog dances the cat dances i don't know things dance okay so it's intransitive in nearly every case however you can perform a dance so you could say dancy la tango so to dance the tango okay so in that case it's actually transitive so dancy is neither just transitive or just intransitive it's a majority of the time transitive, but sometimes it's intransitive. So this is why that rule of learning whether a verb is transitive or intransitive is good 90% of the time. However, that 10% of the time is going to mess with you. So it's actually better. Yes, learning transitivity is good, but it's actually better just to learn the core meaning of the verb, okay? Because if you know the core meaning, you learn how it's actually used. Then you don't have to worry about is it transitive or is it intransitive? And then you don't also mix it up so much with English, which is something I'm still guilty of every now and then. Because in English, the verb transitivity sometimes is the same as Esperanto, but sometimes it's different, okay? So you have to be prepared for that. Now let's look at some examples with those affixes I spoke about earlier. So first up, Iggy means to make or to cause, IG means to become. Now, most people will say IGI makes a verb transitive and IG makes a verb intransitive. And although that is correct, it doesn't always mean what you think it means, okay? Now, the best way to see this is again in context. So, let's go with the whole boil thing as we did before. So, BOLLY means to be boiling. There you go, straight away it's different to how um, English works. In English, to boil can be either transitive or intransitive, depending on where it sits in the sentence. In Esperanto, boli is always intransitive. It's always to be boiling, okay? Now, if you want to make something boil or to cause something to boil, you've got to use the, um, affix, the affix igi, okay? So, boligi means to cause to boil or to make boiling. So to cause something to boil, okay. So boli means to be boiling and boligi means to make boiling, okay. So to make whatever, the water boiling, to make the tea boiling, 
to make the flesh of your enemies boiling. <laughs> oh god, I'm getting way too crazy with that one. So let's look at another example. So you got ed, which means to go. Now, it's pretty much the same as English. It's intransitive in nearly every case, they okay. But if you wanted to make something go, or to make someone go, okay, you'd say irigi. You use the igi, to make. So irigi means to make go. So to make your friend go, to make the, um, the car go somewhere. You know what I mean? It means to make that verb start, to happen, okay, to go. Um, let's look at another one. So dormi is always intransitive. It means to be sleeping, okay? So let's say if you're looking at a baby and you want to make the baby go to sleep, you'd say dormigi la bebon, to make the baby go to sleep. You see how the igi turns things transitive, but it actually also gives it a certain meaning. So you got to learn that meaning to make or to cause, okay? Because it might not actually have the same meaning. And also, another thing is, you can put igi on a transitive verb already and it changes the meaning again okay now let's look at some more examples so this is where it's going to get a little bit more uh, you know, a little bit more murky i guess so study means to stand okay so to be in a standing state to stand if you say study it means to make stand so for instance um study la bebon to stand up the baby okay to make him into a standing position but then if you say study IG means to become, remember? So, start IG means to become standing, okay? That's different to study, which means to be standing. So, study is to be standing. Start IG means to become standing. So, for instance, the hairs on the back of your neck or on the back of the neck of a dog when it gets scared. They start IG, they become standing, okay? So, you got to see, although um, study is by itself an intransitive verb, you can use IG with it and it actually has a different meaning. It doesn't just make it intransitive, it's already intransitive, it just adds another layer of meaning onto it. So that's why it's not just the best way to think in a transitive versus intransitive context. You've got to learn the meaning of the words and the affixes and then when you put them together it makes more logical sense. Now let's look at another case where you actually use, say, an adjective as a verb. So you got blua, which is blue, okay? That's not a verb, so you can't look up in the dictionary what its status is, transitive or intransitive. But if you make an adjective into a verb, so you say bluey, generally what it does is it means to be the adjective. So bluey means to be blue, okay? So therefore that would be intransitive, yeah? Because you're talking about the subject, to be blue. So, la cielo bluas, the sky is blue, okay? You could therefore say bluigi, to make blue, okay? So that makes it therefore transitive. Or you could say bluigi, which means to become blue. Therefore again, it's intransitive, but it actually has a different meaning to bluey, okay? So this if this blew your mind and you're like, I hate you right now, evil deer, I understand. I've been through this. It's kind of if you learn the actual meaning of the verb, then you can kind of from there just know whether it's transitive or intransitive. That's the best way to do it. Yes, attaching the label transitive or intransitive to a verb helps in the short term, but once you mix it with English and you have opposites in English or whatever language you're native with, it can mess with things a bit. So try and learn the meaning of the word, then you will know whether it's transitive and intransitive and whether it requires the accusative case or what you can do with it. So that's basically it. If you've liked this video or I've just confused the freaking hell out of you, leave a comment below, like my video, share it around with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, me, Boligosvin. <laughs>